Well, hey there, I'm Kay on my homestead in Tennessee. And I wasn't planning to make a video, but I went down to harvest and the garden is so different from when you saw it. I filmed some clips and I thought I would get that out to you. I have been filming all along here and there, clips here and there, but I haven't managed to put them into a form and get them in a video. So it's better that we just start fresh. This is the first week in September. Wow, is it? Today's the 8th. So I'm gonna to try to get this out so that you get an idea of what things look like now. I know a lot of people's gardens are done. Mine is not done. I still have okra coming in, some tomatoes, and I've got all of those heirloom peas yet to come in. They're a late pea and I planted them late, so they haven't, they're, they're blooming and they're, I've got tiny little pods. The sunflowers though are the uh, star attraction for today's video. So take a look at how things stand now. And I was standing in bare feet. These are actually the blooms, these tiny little flowers on the Sweet Annie. But this bush has a, an ant mound growing up the stem that's killing the plant. They go all the way up the joints and they leave some sticky material. And that's what they bring the dirt up to stick to. Look at the base. That's another anthill. Right beside my water pipe. Wow, it looks like all the rain has kind of worn them out prematurely. Oh, they're so pretty. Or I should say they would have been pretty we hadn't had so much rain. Multi-bloom heads. This is prickly cida, S-I-D-A. It actually attracts bees and pollinators to your garden, but it is a weed and it invades your crops. And this is just blue spice basil, which I was growing for pollinators. Okay, look at this blue spice basil. This is what too much rain can do. And of course I haven't pruned this because it's actually not that, it's kind of bitter to eat. So I just kept it for the pollinators and it's got, gives a great scent to the garden. Here's my Egyptian spinach and it is blooming and there are a few pods, seed pods I've seen back in there, back in the forest there. This is my Egyptian spinach forest. I don't know that I can, I mean, I could go through there, but I'm gonna be soaking wet because all of these 
leaves are dripping wet. On Friday, my helper moved all these marigolds into a row back here so that we could clean out the cabbage patch and put seeds down. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Look at these seeds coming up! Well, I wasn't very good about spreading them, was I? <laughs> I thought surely that seed would go farther than that one than, than this one little space, but obviously the seed was so fine and I was spreading it with just just with my hand and I got way 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 too much This is Facelia or Facelia Well, we'll see it. I'll have to thin that out in order to get anything to bloom My goodness What's all this? I didn't put any seed down here, but there's seed all over coming up. Maybe that's the clover from last year. That would be convenient. Look at that. This was my first pea patch. We cleared it out last week. Some peas are coming back up. Several peas are coming back up. Plus the little Facelia. Oh, the okra looks bad. <laughs> I need to get in there quick. And here's a sweet Annie that's going to seed. And I have them six feet tall as well. Ground cherry. And there's a couple of lanterns on here. These turn paper, almost paper white, with a red orange fruit inside that is incredible but I don't know that I'll get to taste one even with four plants we'll see well my squash this used to be all leaves and the leaves have died. I had terrible stink bug problem. We sprayed on Friday again. And that's the Guatemalan for sure, hanging under there. So that might be the Chinese tropical pumpkin, which I also planted. And that is butternut, butternut, butternut. And that one, I don't know, that one I mean. I don't know. Oh, that's a watermelon, and that's a watermelon. Yeah, the watermelons and the squash run together. That over there is the Guatemalan. Ooh, that watermelon looks like it's disengaged. Oh my goodness. It's probably time to take these watermelons. They're so small though. Well, I'm going to have help on Saturday. It's two days. Two days from now, I'm going to have help, so we'll get all this cleared out. It's just when they... Oh, my gosh! I was going to bring spray down here. Look at this. Oh, this is the one that, yeah, they were eating on that the other day. That's butternut. I don't know which one that is. It's watermelon, watermelon, but that watermelon looks rotted on the end. Too much rain, folks. It's just, oh, too much rain. I'm glad I got my Kushaw in before this last deluge. Hi, baby. Are you going to help me? Huh? This is the Guatemalan blue. They're so pretty, like pale blue pink modeled sort of looks like a faux finish on paint I'm thinking this is the Chinese tropical pumpkin I hope so okay so in here this is my eggplant so I've got a few ready today this is the wild goose pea 
just coming on. It's a late pea. It looks really good right now. Uh, this squash vine is running through here, but it's all tangled up. I don't know. Should get quite a few peas out of that. Pretty flowers. So this is what okra does when it's getting ready to stop. <laughs> it puts a bunch up at the top and I didn't get down here for four days. So most of these are too far along. They're not gonna be tender to eat. So I'm just gonna take what's good, like the left one, and drop the right one. Okay, this is the last biggest tomato that's coming off right now. That's a Hungarian heart, and it's at least a pound. And here's one more. The first time I've grown these, and we've had these two major rain cycles in July, it rained all the time. And now it's been raining for a few days, so it's much better to harvest tomatoes, you know, when they haven't been saturated with rain. This is about the last 15 to 20 feet of the lower 5,000 square foot garden. That is a tomato that spread out like a bush. Those are Sweet Annie that have gone to flower, that one and that one. All down in here we have more of the blue spice basil. And all of this is the sweet potato. And it's still blooming. In September, so I am not sure <laughs> when it's going to be done. Look at that. My mistake was not putting down thick hay in between the rows of sweet potatoes. So we have all of these weeds have invaded the sweet potato patch. So you pull them out now, you risk the sweet potato vines. So just going to have to clean it up when it's all done. Harvest is winding down, definitely. We had five baskets on Friday. This cotton is amazing. And look at these watermelons. Look at those babies. Aren't they beautiful? Wow. And these are my baby lima beans. They look great. No, no, this is something else. I'm going to have to get in there and figure it out. This is my cotton. I have about nine cotton plants, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And they have these beautiful pink flowers. And the best part of the whole garden, now you get to see them in the sun. These sunflowers were the last thing I planted. And I just wanted something pretty going into the fall. And aren't they absolutely gorgeous? I wish I had three times that many. Wow, the bees are all over. Okay, I am very surprised to have such a big eggplant harvest. These are the long purple ones. And there's another big one here. And a few more little ones growing. What about over here? Anything? I don't see anything on there. Okay, this is the flea beetle. You see all those little holes? You can fight flea beetle with diatomaceous earth, but you have to sprinkle it on the leaves in between rains. <laughs> and I didn't even think of it in that last three week heat wave and they got eaten up. All that yellow. That is pollen packed on the back of its two legs. <laughs> on the, on the t two back legs, I should say. 
what are you going up there to do? Hmm? Hmm? I love this sunflower mix. I'm going to have to check the package. Oh, wow. It almost looks like the 1960s. That's <laughs> so amazing. Oh, that's heavy. Okay, good. Okay, I overloaded my middle basket, unfortunately, but I'm not going to separate them till I get up to the house. And I'm grounding again today, hiding inflammation. If you want to grow something nutritious, carefree, the bugs apparently leave it alone. And it's just gorgeous. Gotta provide a trellis though. It's red Malabar spinach. Look at that. All those beautiful flowers about to burst open and make seeds. I need to collect leaves and dry them, I guess. What do you think, Tiger? Are you impressed? Hi, Patch. Hi, Spawn. BJ, do not attack Patch. No. Mm -mm. BJ, leave her alone, okay? This is all that I harvested off of my two tomato terraces. I may be doing something different with those next year. Lots of eggplant, one small kusha, and this basket has oh, oh, okra tomatoes and some peas thanks so much for watching this channel and if you are interested in building a sustainable homestead possibly you're at a, a later age like i am i hope you'll follow along see the mistakes i've made and then you won't have to make them and all of the successes so thanks so much for watching i look forward to seeing you in the next video but look at these peppers. I've got one. I didn't harvest the peppers and I need to. I think I'm going to let these dry. These are long cayennes. And I think these are the ones I got from John, the guy that was helping me earlier in the year. These are the banana peppers I got from my neighbor. Oh, come on, Kay. I'm going to have to ferment these or something. I mean, they're, some of them are supposed to be hot and some of them are not. So I'm going to have to cut into each one to figure. Oh, look, I've got green peppers. Oh, my goodness. I thought this was more of the same. Look at that. That's the prettiest green pepper I've ever grown. Green peppers just wouldn't grow for me in California because bigger peppers take longer. I did not realize I had <laughs> green peppers. But some of these are hot banana peppers and some are not. So I don't know how I'm going to figure out. Now Stacy at Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, she says the hot peppers get less hot 
in the fermenting process. The whole plant is ready to be harvested, almost. Uh-uh, got a mosquito after me. I didn't put on bug spray today. Look at this. Stop it, stop it. Okay. That's a big harvest. Okay, so let's see. Three green peppers. I'm definitely going, you know, Stacy has a relish, a summer garden relish ferment. Now we have the final harvest for today. And this is a big question. I'm wondering if anybody knows what this is. This is actually a jalapeno. And all of these came off the same plant. So, it seemed to have something wrong with it and it seemed to have recovered. So if anybody knows what this is, please tell me. It's never happened to mine before. This is all off of one plant. And as you can see, there's three that look normal. So it may be snapping out of whatever was going on. Two melons. And I hope they're ripe. 